In this video we're going to be replacing a rear differential assembly in a 2007 Saturn View. The procedures in this video will apply to pretty much any four-wheel drive or wheel drive with a rear differential. On this one we have uh, CV axles that go in either side but the principles are very much similar depending on the year, make, bo uh, model and body style of your car. For all the parts and everything you need I've linked them in the description below. Now if all you want to do is replace some seals or anything like that, then follow the video, we'll show you how to take it out of the car so you can replace the seals. If all you want to do is change the fluid inside, again we're going to do that too. Follow along, check that out. Alright, so what is a differential anyway? This is what a differential assembly looks like. And um, to put it simply, the differential is used to deliver engine power to the driving wheels. So the power comes in through the drive shaft, which is attached here, and then it gives output power to the wheels, which is uh, on each side at the back there. In a nutshell, that's what a differential is. So the differential is a crucial part of the drivetrain system, and without some kind of differential, the car wouldn't be able to run in this uh, all-wheel drive vehicle here. There's several types of differentials, but they all pretty much do the same thing, which is delivering power to the wheels. So for this project, there's not a whole bunch you need really. You need a, obviously a rear differential here. I got this from a salvage yard. It was around $130, so a lot cheaper than someone coming in here and fixing it and all the gears and whatnot. I've got an axle nut set, again you can rent that. Uh, we've got a breaker bar, uh, some sockets, some allen wrenches. This ensures we can take the drain and refill plug off the differential. And some differential fluid. And on a certain uh, view all-wheel drive you can use the VersaTrack fluid, which is the OEM really expensive fluid. Or you can use this Royal Purple Synchro Max, which is also pretty good for this too. So before we get on to it, you want to make sure you actually do have a bad differential. The last thing you want to do is put down loads of cash and do this job and it doesn't cure the problem. So, signs of a bad differential. A whirring noise or howling upon de deceleration. A whining noise or howling when accelerating. A rumbling or whirring at speeds over 20 miles an hour that sort of change when turning. A clunking noise when you first begin to move your car. A steady vibration that increases with speed. Now these are some of the signs of a bad differential. If you have all of them, it's safe to say it could be this, but there's some of the signs of uh, a failing differential. And usually it's just contaminated fluid or lack of maintenance of the fluid inside it. They're the common problems of why these fail. So what happens, for example, if you have fluid loss, then too much heat and friction is generated inside the housing and then parts inside can fail. It's really as simple as that. Other reasons, you, you know, you could go over a bump, a rock could hit it, uh, anything like that. So there are a couple of contributing factors, but like I say, it's usually down to the quality of the fluid or the volume of the fluid inside. Now, if you've identified a problem with the differential, you might not need to replace the whole thing. It might be something really small. If you're not sure, get a diagnosis and, you know, go from there. So one of the first things, it could be leaks and seals. So there's a few seals here. This one seals in the CV axle on each side of the car. There's one each side. And there's various other seals as well in there that keep the fluid in and make sure it doesn't sort of leak out. And the fluid obviously is designed to keep things cool and reduce friction inside. So if you have identified that you have some sort of differential failure, then you might not need to replace the whole entire assembly. It might be overkill. It might be something as simple as a seal or, any, or a bearing inside, something like that, something simple which can be fixed. So most differentials have a rubber or silicon seal inside the cover that deteriorates over time, causing the oil to leak. This repair requires the cover to be removed, cleaned, and the new gasket to put in place and sealed. So something as simple as like a seal replacement or gasket replacement usually runs around two to four hundred dollars. If it's a non-leak repair, so nothing's visibly leaking, you don't need seals or gaskets, then it could be a bearing replacement, again around two to four hundred dollars. There are side bearings and a pinion bearing which deteriorate over time. This is what causes the whirring and high, um, howling noises you hear and vibrations also. 
bearing replacements can usually take up to five hours and require a lot of special tools in order to push them in and out. So again, around two to four hundred dollars, give or take. And the last one is a gear replacement. So chipped and worn down teeth on the differential gears can also cause uh, various noises, um, you know, vibrations, whirring. But these are integral parts of the differential and cost, can cost up to $1,500 uh, for the parts and labor. So um, they're the costs. Again, $130 for this. We're going to do this at home. So even if you have a gasket uh, gone bad, it's pretty much cheaper to do this than replace the gasket and fluid itself. So the call is yours. They're the common problems with them. So we're going to go ahead with the replacement of this differential. So you don't really need to worry about um, what's wrong with your differential if you have a quick visual inspection. You can see here it's totally cracked around the housing. All the fluids leaked out. It's a catastro catastrophic failure really. Um, so yeah, we're going to pull this whole housing out and replace it. The very first thing, even before we put the vehicle on jack stands, we're going to break the axle nuts. So to do that, we're going to take off the dust covers on the back and crack the axle nuts. Now, I recommend cracking the axle nut first because it's a, a, pretty much of a crux as far as tools go. It's a 29mm and you can just tap it on with a hammer. It gets a right, nice real snug on a 29mm. If you don't have an axle nut set, you can rent these for free at Pet Boys or anywhere else, again, in the description below. Uh, just use a nice long breaker bar, half inch drive, and just crack the nut. We're not going to take it off right now, we're just going to crack it. And do that on both sides of the car. Before you put it on jack stands, if you don't have an impact gun, then it might be good to break these uh, lug nuts as well. Now the rear axle nuts are cracked, uh, we can proceed with removing the drive shaft. Now the drive shaft, I've actually got a whole complete video on how to remove it from this exact vehicle, so I've linked it in the description below. Check that out. Once you've watched that video and you've got the drive shaft off, we can proceed with removing the wheels, the CV axles and then the differential. So now the drive shaft has been removed. We're just going to place the vehicle on jack stands on the body of the car towards the rear, just so both wheels are off the ground and we have enough access for us to get underneath and pull the differential down. So we just got the rear of the vehicle off the floor, not by much, you don't really need to go crazy. Put it on jack stands, I've got some emergency ones in case it drops and I've chopped off the front wheels. Give it a wiggle, make sure it's nice and solid. Then we're going to start removing each wheel on both sides. So take all the lug nuts off, all five of them, both sides, and roll the wheels out of the way. So now both wheels are off the vehicle there. What we're going to do now is just loosen this uh, 29mm axle nut so it's level with the end and then we're going to tap this with a hammer. The reason we have it level is so when we hit this we don't damage the threads which makes it hard to get back on and off afterwards. So we're just going to tap this with a hammer and that should free the CV axle from the uh, wheel bearing assembly which lives just inside here. So what we're going to do on both sides of the car that is, we just need to remove this CV axle. Um, we just want to get it out of the differential but it's sandwiched between the differential and the uh, wheel bearing assembly which lives inside here. Now what we need to do is free this, which we've done by hitting this with a hammer, but we need to remove it up and out. Now the easiest way to do that is to remove this bolt, these three bolts here, and underneath this bolt here for the lower control arm and that way there's just enough room to move this all out the way and just slip this out of here. Another way of doing it is to take the brake drum off and remove the brake components here, the brake drum components and remove the wheel bearing assembly. However on this car these wheel bearing assemblies are almost always seized on especially if you've been over around 30,000 miles it's just not worth it at all. So uh, for the sake of five bolts and just carefully levering it out of the way it's a lot easier to do this method. So the first bolt we're going to take off is this 18 millimeter here you might need a box and wrench on the other end just to hold the nut steady on the other side and we're just going to take this bolt out. When removing the bolt just support it with a jack and slightly uh, higher it to support the lower control arm then you can just pull out the bolt rather easily rather than turning it all the way out and putting stress on the bolt at an angle. Next we're going to undo these three 18mm bolts here. Easiest way is to get them from uh, below and just take them all out. 
Now those three bots have been removed, this will uh, run quite separately. We're going to uh, move the brake line here, this is the harness for the brake line, just in front of all of this here. Because the thing is when this bolt comes out, our last bolt, this whole thing will sort of move this way. So we don't want this to be trapped behind this beam here. So we want it to come with us. So that's why it's on this side. That's very important. And when we remove this bolt here, you have to be very careful. Again, uh, there's a brake line here and it's not flexible and it goes into the brake cylinder, into the brake drum. If you want to learn about brake drums, I've got a video. I'll link it in the description below. Um, so we have to be very cautious about these brake lines here. This is the only flexible piece, so where it flexes, this is where it should do so. So the last bolt here is a 21mm. Just put a box end wrench on the end here, very carefully. I want to watch the brake line. And then we're going to undo from this side out of the way of uh, the danger of the brake line. So that's our last bolt uh, to go. So before we remove the bolt here, just support the uh, hub with your body. I'm just going to pull this bolt out. And then it should just pull forwards, just slightly. You can see the uh, brake cables coming with us and everything here. So just pay attention to this. If you need more slack, you can undo this bolt here and give it a bit more leeway. But we, we're perfectly fine here. Now the aim here is just to push the CV axle out here. So just make sure it's still free from the knuckle there, which it is. I'm just going to press it out. We're going to pull it out of the knuckle here, up, over. So this is what it should look like right now. Make sure your brake cable is fine. It's not under any stress. It looks okay. So this is just hanging here. This is anti-seize. I've been in here before and already replaced this. That's why it looks like that. So now we're going to go underneath the car and separate the CV axle from the differential housing. So to separate the CV axle from the differential, we just need to drive something in this gap here. Uh, the actual tool is called a pickle fork, and the idea is uh, it looks a bit like this. And you just drive it up and it separates the two here, just like that. But pretty much anything will work, just something like a small crowbar is fine. Just drive this in the gap here and just uh, hit the bottom with a hammer and that will just separate it out. Very easy. Once it's clear for about half an inch or so, it's broke free, so we can just pull it out. So now we can just remove the CV axle from the vehicle. Don't tug it too much, you'll separate the uh, inner joint here, so make sure it's properly free before we remove it from the car. Now we've removed our first CV axle, we're going to do exactly the same on the other side of the vehicle. So now both CV axles are out of the vehicle. The uh, shorter one here is the driver's side. You can see it's around a couple inches shorter, so that's how you don't get mixed up. If your differential fluid's contaminated, make sure you clean these ends here. Just give it a nice clean with a cloth. You don't need to do nothing special. And while they're out of the car, you know they're quite hard to get to, it's good to check the joints. Now this is the inner CV joint and the outer CV joint. Just check the boots aren't ripped. Make sure they're not leaking. Make sure there's no residue from a previous leak. And make sure they're quite uh, firm when you try and move them. So the joint here should uh, not feel clunky, knocky, and it should move with just a little bit of force. Then you know all the joints are fine. If it's flopping around or you pick the uh, axle up and it falls down, you know it might be time to replace these. And it's a perfect time to do that. I'm satisfied that these are okay so we can continue. Now the only thing holding this differential in is three bolts. One at the uh, passenger side here. Same on the driver's side, and at the back, there's two bolts right here. You don't need to bother with the bolt at the back of here, because we're going to unbolt it at the front here. So all four of these bolts are 18 millimeter. What we're going to do is crack all four and make sure they're loose. The easiest way to do that is come around the side and put a socket on, then just use your foot just to push it and that will break it, no sweat at all. With the rear ones are exactly the same, put your wrench on and just pull from the rear and just break them. Once all the bolts are broken, we're just going to take all the nuts off all the bolts. So uh, we're just going to take the nuts off, leave the bolts in 
because when we drop the differential it's easier just to poke all the bolts out so it comes down evenly on uh, whatever jack system we have. So now all four nuts are off, we're going to take out the differential. So for this I'm going to use my transmission jack, I'm just going to jack it up so it's snug under the differential. I can ratchet it so it doesn't move around and then I'm going to lower it and drag it out. It's about 30-35 oh, pounds, give or take, if it has fluid in, maybe a tiny bit more. So really you could just kind of wrestle it off and, you know, take it out, no problem. It's, it's really your call, so. Okay, it's easiest to show off the car um, rather than under there. What we're going to do first, we're going to remove these two bolts, uh, take them out, and then it's just hanging by these two here. Uh, if you're lucky, it might be seized on just slightly, so you can take all the bolts out and then just give it a whack and it'll drop. But we're going to take these two out first, position something underneath, whether it's your hands, yourself, a jack, whatever you have, and then we're going to take these two bolts out and let it drop down. Now the differential is lowered slightly. You could also do this before. There's just a little uh, vent hose here that's connected to the top of the differential. You can just pull this free, it comes towards the back of the vehicle. As a reference, this is what it looks like here on the back, right there. So coming underneath the car, you can see uh, all the differential fluid is flung out and dried off. And under here is an absolute mess. So. Uh, uh, degreaser works great. Uh, oven cleaner, one dollar for one can. Spray it all down, let it sit for about five minutes, and uh, hose it down. And then you'll have a nice clean uh, undercarriage ready for reinstall. So, if you don't have a transmission jack or anything like that to lower it carefully, you might want to drain the fluid first. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So, you can see here's the old differential assembly here. Wow. <laughs> So the sticker here, it's actually bubbled because it's overheated so much, it's actually started bubbling the label on there. It's absolutely insane. And if you come over this side, you can see it's cracked all the way along the housing and uh, again all the way around the rear too. And when it was on the car, we could see, there it is there. So yeah, absolutely shot. And if you move it up and down, I don't know if you can that but all the gears inside are loose uh, so yeah so good, good job we're changing this we will be surprised that the car still drives on this differential which is absolutely nuts uh, I don't recommend it but it's just uh, yeah interesting to know and as I mentioned in the drive shaft video the Saturn can run without a drive shaft I haven't been running mine with the drive shaft but you can see on the old one see how freely this spins here on the new one it's uh, a lot tough, a lot smoother. So yeah, that's something interesting to know. So to service a differential in terms of fluid, uh, you only need two Allen wrenches here. You need an 8mm and a 6mm. Now to drain the differential, it's where the drive shaft connects. It's just underneath and it is right there and that is a six millimeter but always always before draining fluid from a differential we need to make sure we can get fluid back into it and this is when it's on the car and you're just changing the fluid if you're changing out the whole assembly it probably doesn't really matter that much it doesn't really matter what happens to the old one and now the uh, refill for the differential that's the eight millimeter and it's on the total opposite end and that is located right here, and that's uh, 8 millimeters. Now before undoing anything hex shaped or anything with a hole, whether it's Torx or hex, get a small flathead and clear all the dirt out of the hole. If you round this, then you will need to take it in or get a very special drill and drill it out or may maybe weld something in. It's a total nightmare. I've been there before. So clean it out properly. Make sure it's nice and clean and then proceed to undo it with uh, the 8mm Allen wrench. With the drain bolt and the refill bolt, take them out and put some anti-seize on the threads. I highly recommend this. These seize a lot especially these housings they get quite hot and things can seize on there and that includes uh, refill and uh, drain ports so put anti-seize on the threads 
uh, you won't regret it at all. Make sure there's none on the inside where it can contaminate the fluid and just pop it back in. And do the same for the drain port as well. So I'm going to be refilling the fluid uh, for the differential when it's installed in the vehicle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten my drain plug uh, to spec. If you don't know what the spec is, then just make sure it's nice and snug. And the refill port, I'm just going to leave that loose. We don't really want to wrestle undoing that um, un underneath the car. So just leave it somewhat loose, uh, finger tight is fine. Now, the only way to fill this is with a fluid pump. You can get something really cheap like this. I'll link it in the description. If you don't have any kind of pump and you're in a bind or anything like that, then you could refill it now and be really careful when you get it in the vehicle, but um, that is really up to you. So with your replacement differential assembly, I got mine again $130 or so. I've made sure it's drained completely using the drain plug and put that back on. So it's ready to be installed, it's somewhat empty, uh, so we're good to go on that front. So we've put anti-seize on the refill and the drain plug. Um, it's drained of its fluid, it is a second-hand differential. Now we're going to put it back in the vehicle. And before you put it back in the vehicle, always check your parts. Checks for length, width, style, uh, even model number. But as long as you know you got it off a vehicle that's compatible with yours, you're good to go. So we're going to put the new one back in the vehicle now. It's pretty much the opposite. Um, when you push it in, don't forget the vacuum hose first and then tighten the bolts. So for the bolts uh, on the differential housing, I'm going to use um, removable Loctite. It's the blue one. Just put a little bit on the threads. Uh, you don't need to go crazy or anything like that, but just put a, like a little narrow band all the way around the circumference of it. And that just makes sure when there's uh, vibrations or anything like that, these bolts don't come undone. Because the last thing you want to do is, uh, well, for that to happen. So now the differential assembly is in the car, it's bolted down, we're going to fill it up with some differential fluid. Now the uh, the Versatrack fluid, that's the GM fluid, uh, model 12378514 in the US or 88901045 in Canada. Uh, that is really, really expensive, probably three times the price of this stuff. It's a uh, Royal Purple Synchromax, and it's pretty much the only substitute for that Versatrack liquid. Nothing else will really do. Um, I've done so much research on this, and people have reported that this works quite well. So we're going to use the uh, Synchromax. Again, I'll link both of them in the description, the uh, GM Versatrack and the Synchromax, so you can make your decision with that. Now, you need a 25.35 fluid ounces or 750 milliliters so what I've got here is a yogurt pot I've uh, filled it up with water from a measuring jug and marked out 750 so I know exactly where to fill to so we're gonna put our royal purple into there and then we're gonna pump it out with our little fluid pump into the differential and if you're confused by that that's because uh, this is quart size so it's more than we need So now we're going to take out our fill plug that was finger tight and start pumping in the fluid. So we're just filling up the differential now. If you get a bit uh, left in the pipe or a bit at the bottom, just add a bit more in. Um, you know, you just use your brain over it really, just so it's roughly accurate. It doesn't have to be down to the exact milliliter, but they're about 750 mils. So uh, one thing I'll mention with this differential when you're uh, refilling the fluid is that um, 750ml will just make it level with the refill port and also where the CV axles go in, so it will just uh, overspill. So if you try and put like 900 in, it's going to come out anyway, so yeah, just something to note. Now we've filled the differential, just tighten it up with the 8mm. Just make it snug, don't go crazy with that. Uh, with the residue of the differential fluid in here just lube up where the CV axles go in so right there just lube around all the edge make sure it's lubricated and that allows for getting our CV axles in a lot easier so now we're going to put the CV axles back in the vehicle remember the uh, longer one is the passenger side so um, when we put these back in there's a little pin here you see 
not really a pin but a, a split ring and uh, what that does this split ring helps it keep it in the differential and that's why we have to use that kind of pickle, pickle fork to get it out so what you can do is put like a little bit of grease on here just to keep this central because what happens is you're pushing in and the ring goes to one side and it's not going in it's really frustrating so you can put a bit of grease or something on there just to keep that nice and central and when we push these in, we're going to push them in as straight as possible. So that's how we get these in. It's a little bit awkward, but uh, you should be okay with it. So just line it up as straight as possible uh, on the end there. And just grab the rod and push, just like that. We don't want to put uh, too much stress on the boots or anything like that. So uh, just grab the rod, push, it'll click. And you can confirm by looking underneath to make sure it's got a nice solid connection. If you lightly pull you'll see it's nice and in there, so we're good to go. Now with these uh, axle ends here, one thing I definitely recommend is putting some anti-seize on these splines here. They can get seized on, and also on the outer wall here that's facing us. So go all the way around with that, and that way it'll never get uh, seized on again if you have to come in here. So we're just going to feed the CV axle uh, back through the knuckle here by pulling this out and feeding it through there. Um, I'm going to use medium front uh, Loctite on all of these bolts here that we've undone, so just a little sliver. Anything that vibrates, you, again, you don't want to come undone, so that's how we're going to do it. So top bolt in first, and that keeps everything steady. You don't have to crank it down yet because we'll put the other bolts in first, otherwise it will be hard to tighten. Uh, the frame for the... Um, uh, brake line here goes be back behind here, and there's a hole on it. On the it's, this gets bolted to the uh, arm here, and the bolt goes through the uh, top bolt right there. So here's a little tip with the last one. You can see it's uh, misaligned. Um, the control arm's off to the right. Uh, so in this case, take a jack and put it in on the left side. So when we jack the control arm up, the jack will pull it to the left that way. If it's the opposite, say. Uh, this is on the other side right here and put the jack this side so when you jack it up it will bring it over here so a little tip for you there so now everything's bolted in uh, don't forget to tighten this one down fully before you're done and now we're going to put on the axle nut so the uh, washer there and then just put the axle nut on uh, we're not going to tug it down to full spec we're just going to get it on enough so it stays on, uh, and then we're going to lower the car and actually tighten that down properly. So I did about 80, 90 foot pounds by feel. Uh, the reason I put it on now while it's jacked up is that the uh, it brings the CV axle back through the wheel bearing assembly. So it's sort of where it should be before we put the wheels on and lower it down. So that's the reasoning for that. So just going to put the wheels back on now. So before we put the car back down on the ground, just give the differential a nice clean of all the liquids and everything. So if it starts leaking over the next week or so, we're going to know about it. So that's the idea with that. So clean off uh, all the CV axle ends here, the housing and everything. So we want to know if there's a leak and where it comes from, if there is one. Um, if you have a car that can ride without a drive shaft, like the Saturn View or wheel drive, then I recommend leaving the drive shaft off for a week or so, um, just to verify that everything's okay. And then we can put the drive shaft back on, um, you know, in a week or so. So the last question you're probably asking yourself is about the drive shaft here. What about our markings on the differential? Because we've just replaced the whole differential assembly. How are we going to get this sort of balanced with the differential? Now, the drive shaft itself is balanced at the factory. It's got all the weights and everything. But it can generate a vibration um, if it's not lined up on the differential. That's correct. So you have two options, really. You can take the whole car with the drive shaft to a shop and get them to properly uh, balance it and align it with the differential. Option one. Option two, you can just bolt it in. And if you have a vibration, rotate it 90 degrees, try again, etc. So um, that's really the cheap person's method. So there's really two ways you're going to um, do this, really. So the torque spec for the axle nuts, uh, 151 foot pounds. So um, by feel, just really go for it, as tight as you can get them. So that is it. I hope it helped you. Um, I think the best quote I got was about $3,000 just for that job and it took around two and a half hours with the filming so it shows what you can do at home when you have the tools and you know how to do it.
So uh, thank you for watching. I hope it helped you. Let me know how you get on.